How's it going guys? It's the final render here and welcome to 60 Seconds. 60 Seconds is a pretty cool survival game based in the nuclear apocalypse where you have got to micromanage your family's needs in order to survive the nuclear fallout from inside your bunker. And it's a pretty fun game actually. It's got an awful lot of kind of quirky humour to it and but just beneath the humour there is a very scary and very serious kind of undertone to it as you'd expect. But it's got a lovely cartoon art style and it's good fun. So let's jump into the game and see how long we can survive in the apocalypse. Let's go. Okay so this is how the game starts. This is us in our home and we only have I believe 60 seconds, hence the name, to actually grab all the equipment we need to survive and it is deliberately really hard to control this guy and here we go the alarms have sounded we've got to grab all the supplies we can alright we've got two cans of soup right there we've got some water right there oh we've got a gas mask right there that'll be very useful we can only carry four things at once alright so let's do this throw that into the bunker throw it in there alright brilliant 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 okay what have we got in the kitchen loads of soup in the kitchen alright so let's just grab all the soup we can Alright, grab that. We'll also grab a water. Alright, we've got 32 seconds left. Alright, throw that into the bunker. Grab our wife. Throw her in there. Okay, our son Timmy, he's in here. Okay, grab Timmy. Uh, grab that padlock while we're here. Oh, we got that scout book in there. We'll need that, trust me. Right, we've only got 15 seconds left. Alright, throw them in there. Where's our daughter? Where's our daughter? Where is she? There she is, she's playing the saxophone in the toilet. What a bizarre girl. Okay, uh, grab the pesticide. That's all the time we got. Alright. Darn it. Okay, throw him in there. One second to spare, one second to spare. Okay, we've got a few supplies there to get us going and hopefully we have got enough food and water to survive. But there were a lot of things we didn't get. We didn't get the gun, we didn't get the axe, we didn't get any med kits. We, there's loads we didn't get, people. So here we are inside our bunker on day one and we've got everything we need to survive in here hopefully. Oh there's a radio down here, that's brilliant so we can listen to the outside. Three bottles of water, two, we've got like six cans of soup, that is awesome. This is our family, this is Ted, Mary Jane, cute little Timmy, he's kind of staring off into the void, you know looking a bit crazy already. And here is Dolores, our lovely wife. So let's go. Day one. All of us made it into the shelter just a second before the blast. That was a close one. As long as we're all together, we can make it work down here. We remember hearing canned soup is healthy for you. We vaguely remember stashing some things into the shelter because there was no room for them upstairs. Turns out being messy can really work in your favour. Plus one radio. So the radio was already down here, that's brilliant. Our shelves are full of cans. We'll eat from cans, we'll sleep on cans, we'll even talk to cans. Some of us already do. There was just barely enough water for everyone. We'll have to ration it strictly. You only really need to give soup to people like maybe every six days or so, but water, maybe three, four days, and no one's thirsty right now because it's day one. So, day one, let's play a game, they said. It will be fun, they said. They never mentioned picking one would be so much trouble. There we go, so they're already getting annoyed because I didn't get any playing cards, I didn't get a board game or anything for them to do in the shelter. Our shelter is tiny, but this has been bugging us for a while now. We checked all the closets and no one is hiding there. It's something to keep us alive down here besides us. Maybe a rodent of some kind, if we need to show it that we are the dominant species in this little paradise. Okay, so there's a little rodent inside the shelter somewhere and it's making lots of noise and driving people crazy. And if we had an axe or a gun, we could deal with it so people stop going mental, but we have neither. So, we can't do anything about the rodent that's getting on everyone's nerves. And things getting on your nerves in this kind of situation would drive you insane so quickly. We were running around looking for something to smash that furry rodent with. It just disappeared. And so did one of our food cans. The question is how did that devil fit through one of those little holes? Minus one soup can. Getting something to drink for Mary Jane sounds like the right idea. We can't leave Timmy without water for too long. Water is all Dolores wants. Ted wants some water. Okay, so they're starting to complain that they're getting thirsty, but you know what? It's been three days. They can go at least one, maybe two more days without water. Day four. Mary Jane keeps fainting. We really need to get her someone to drink fast. Timmy's in terrible shape. We need to get him some water now. Dolores will not survive without water any longer. Ted looks like he's got one foot in the grave. He needs to get someone to drink right now. Okay, so it's been four days. Everyone's starting to go a bit crazy. Let's give them all some water. 
That's one of my three bottles gone. There isn't a lot of space down here and we can smell everything. When one of the wall bricks started to get loose today and revealed a hole, we felt pretty sick. It's something smelly coming from that hole and it's terrible. Should we investigate and remove the source of the stench? Yes, remove the source of the stench. We don't want people getting ill from that. Day five. We approached the hole curiously and peeked inside. What happened nearly gave us a heart attack. Some crazed rodent, a reptile or whatever, this crazy mad creature was, leapt out and started jumping all over the damn shelter. It was everywhere. We couldn't catch it. Before we could do anything, it pushed our radio off the table and went back into the hole where it crawled from. We never saw it again. Damn it, we've lost our radio. That's our only way to get news on what's happening on the outside. Day 6. The contamination in our town is still strong. Scavengers in these conditions could result in radiation sickness. Well, we don't really need anything right now. We've still got plenty of food, but water will start to become a problem soon. So while everyone's fairly happy, how about we start packing an exhibition so that we can go tomorrow. Day seven, one week people, we survived a week in the shelter. Okay, so everyone is hungry and thirsty except Ted because we fed him yesterday. So how about we give everyone some food, everyone some water, but we won't give Ted any food because one, he's going outside now, and also he's not hungry. It's about time we chose someone to scavenge the remains of our town and search for supplies, but who will it be? The wasteland awaits. We are gonna take Ted, seeing as he's in the best condition currently, and we can give him an item. If we manage to grab a suitcase, we would have been able to take more than one item. We could have taken four. But the only thing we can give him... Well, we can give him quite a few things. We can give him a gas mask, the Boy Scout book, some pesticide, or a padlock. We're going to give him the gas mask so he doesn't get sick. Okay, so day eight. Time to ration supplies. No one needs anything, which is great news. The trash can is becoming full of empty soup cans, and that unmentionable bucket is starting to overflow. Oh no, the poop bucket. Both of them are attracting strangely glowing, suspicious, big insect wildlife. Roaches weren't that big before the war, were they? Okay, so we need to do something about this bug problem. We did manage to grab some pesticide. So let's deal with those nasty little blighters now before they start eating our food cans. That was close. A nest of those glowing bugs might have been more than enough to drive us out into the wasteland. Roaches are the worst, but radioactive roaches? Yikes! Minus one pesticide. We've only got one more portion of water left, and we really ought to save that for when Ted comes back. Day 11. Okay, so what have we got for day 11? Time to ration supplies. No one needs anything yet again. All right, so if there's anyone who can rescue us from this hellish situation, it's our government. You can badmouth them all you want, but that probably means you're either a naysayer or a commie. We're good citizens, and we've been paying our taxes regularly, so we're sure Uncle Sam is coming to get us. Well, Except that one time when we... Well, never mind. The government people are coming. We should keep our ears and eyes open for any signs of them. So we could turn on the radio if the damn rodent thing didn't smash it to pieces. Damn rodent. Day 13. Matt, Ted's been gone for ages, hasn't he? Alright, so what's happening next? The kids are hungry, so we'll give the kids some soup. But we'll give Dolores our last water. We're going to do that because then she's in perfect condition. Hey, Ted's back, hey! Day 14, that's two weeks, people. Ted has safely returned from his voyage to the surface and he brought back the gas mask. Before our exhibition could get anywhere, we ran into a group of freaky people dressed like wizards and they were eager to trade some supplies for a few items. It sounded like a fair deal, so we invited them in. They were really enthusiastic about purchasing a pair of socks which had been laying in the corner for some time now, living their own life. The wizards got them in exchange for a few bottles of water. One of them has placed the socks on their ears and has started to dance. They really wanted to sell us their radio. They claimed it was evil and whispers about the return of the Dark Lord. We gave them a bottle cap. Hey! So really, Ted didn't really bring back anything, did he? It was those wizards which gave us all the supplies. We thought phone calls were a thing of the past after the atomic bomb obliterated everything on our little town. However, a phone booth across the street survived the bombing somehow and it's ringing right now. Should we send someone to answer it? Yes, let's send, uh, I don't know, send Mary Jane, whatever, she could use the exercise, she's still really fat. Fatty, fatty, fat, fat. Okay, well she came back from answering the phone, so what's happened now? When we answered the phone, we could clearly hear a gasp of relief from the caller. They introduced themselves as survivors from a nearby town of Hill Valley, and started exchanging information when the call was cut short. Something must have gone wrong on their side, we hope they get back to us. 
nothing made us happier than the sight of Mary Jane returning from to the shelter from the surface. All right, Ted's getting hungry now, so how about we go ahead and give Ted some food, and then everyone's in pretty good condition. How about we send Mary Jane out, seeing as she is the fatty, fatty, fat, fat. No one wants to speak to each other. Let's hope that won't last long. All right, so they're arguing because they're bored. Hopefully when Mary Jane comes back from her exhibition in a few days, we'll be able to maybe get some board games or something. Who do we want to send into the wastelands? We're going to send Mary Jane because she's fatty, fatty, fat, fat. Okay, so let's go ahead and give her... Mm, what should we give her? Let's give her the gas mask again so she doesn't get ill. Oh, Ted's really not looking good. He looks bored as hell. Is that a Fallout 1 reference? I think it is. I think that's a... That's a Fallout reference again. Woohoo! Do we go and rob the old people? Oh god! Ted's dead! 